This is one of multiple troubleshooting videos. We've been told that switch one on the left in this topology is not able to ping switch two on the right in this topology. Now in this topology, I'm using physical devices rather than GNS3. I'm only using GNS3 to show a diagram of the topology. So let's verify what we've been told. On switch one, can we ping switch two? It looks like we can't. The pings are failing. So let's do some troubleshooting. Show IP interface brief. Can you see the problem here? What's wrong in this output? So here's the command, show IP interface brief. What's wrong? Notice fast ethernet 03 is down down. Show interface F03. We told that the interface is down, line protocol is down, it's not connected. Now at this point you may need to check the cabling to see if there's a problem. But before you do that, let's have a look at the connection on the other side. So on router one, show IP interface brief. On this side, the interface is up down. Show interface F0. In this output, we can see that fast ethernet zero is up down. On this side, fast ethernet zero three is down down. Now based on this output, what's the problem? Can you see an issue between the switch and the router based on this output? So before walking and checking the physical cabling or getting someone else to check the physical cabling, what can you see that's wrong in this output? Okay, so notice this full duplex 100 megabits per second. On this side, notice auto duplex 10 megabits per second. It looks like there's a problem with the speed and duplex configuration. So on this side, a MAC address and an IP address have been configured on the fast ethernet interface, and the speed of the interface is 10 meg. On this side in the output, we can see that it's using full duplex 100 meg per second. So if we look at the interface configuration, notice the speed and duplex have been hard coded. Typically today, you wouldn't do that. But let's say, for example, that we set the speed and duplex to 100 meg. So on this side, we set the speed to 100 meg. Notice you can see that the interface came up and then went down. And we are seeing another problem, duplex mismatch. And we can see that on both sides. We told that fast ethernet zero is using half duplex. And on our side, we're not using half duplex. So show run interface F zero, speed is 100. What you probably wanna do is set this to do auto negotiation rather than hard code it so that they can negotiate properly. And on this side, we probably wanna do the same. So show run interface F zero slash three rather. So let's set the speed to auto and the duplex to auto so that it's automatically negotiated with the other side. Here we're still seeing problems with speed and duplex. Show run interface F zero. Everything is set to auto. And on this side, show run interface F zero slash three. Everything is set to auto. So show interface F zero slash three. We can now see that the interface has come up, up. It's connected. Show interface F zero. Interface is up, up. So that looks a lot better. So it looks like we've solved the problem between switch one and router one. We didn't have to check the physical cabling. The problem here was that the speed and the duplex were wrong. Okay, so can switch one ping switch two? We're still having a problem. We see use in the output, in other words, unreachable. Show running config. Switch doesn't have a lot of config on it, but what it does have is an IP address configured locally and a default gateway. So can we ping the default gateway? Yes, we can. So I'll disable 
IP domain lookup to speed up trace route. And if we trace to 10132, notice we get to 10111, but we don't get any further. So it looks like the traffic gets to router one, but we're receiving an unreachable message because router one doesn't know what to do with the traffic. So here's router one, show IP route. Now, can you see a problem here? We only have a route for ethernet zero. There's no routes to get to switch to. Show IP protocol. We are running EIGRP on the router and it's enabled on all interfaces. So show run section EIGRP. Here's the EIGRP configuration. That looks good. Show IP EIGRP interface. EIGRP is enabled on fast ethernet zero as well as serial zero. Show CDP neighbors. We see a CDP neighbor relationship to switch one, but we don't see a CDP neighbor relationship to switch two. CDP allows us to check a layer two connectivity. If CDP is working, it means that layer one and layer two are working. But at the moment, it looks like layer one and layer two are not working. So let's check, show IP interface brief. Can you see the problem? Notice serial zero is up down. There's a problem with the physical link between router one and router two. On router two, show IP interface brief. We have the same problem here, serial zero is up down. So now would be a good time to check the cabling. Fortunately, with serial interfaces, we can use the command show controllers serial and specify the serial interface number to check whether a cable is connected to the router. In this case, interface serial zero has a DTE cable connected. It's a V35 cable, but notice the problem. The clocks are stopped. On this side, show controllers serial zero. What's the problem here? What's wrong and how do you fix it? Okay, notice here we've got a V35 DCE cable and there's no clocking on the cable. Show run interface serial zero. Clocking hasn't been configured on the cable. On a DTE cable, you don't use the clock rate command. So I could specify a clock rate, but that command is gonna have no effect because this is a DTE cable. But on this side, if we enter the clock rate command, and notice there are different clock rates available, I'm just gonna use 64K, show run interface serial zero. Notice the command is retained in the running config, and that's because the interface here is a DCE interface. So show IP interface brief. Interface is now up, up. On this side, we saw a neighbor relationship established in EIGRP. We also saw the interface come up. So show IP interface brief. The interface is now up, up. Show controllers, serial zero. On this side, we now see that transmit and receive clocks are detected. On this side, show controllers, serial zero. The clocking is set to 64 kilobits per second because this side is the DCE side of the cable. A back-to-back -back cable is connected between router one and router two. And router two is the DCE side, so it needs to provide the clocking for the connection. So show CDP neighbors. We now see router two as a neighbor on router one. Ping 10122. We can ping router two, show IP ERGRP neighbor, we can see router two as a neighbor. 
And hopefully switch one will now be able to ping switch two, which it can. To confirm that, I'll use the command debug IP ICMP on switch two and ping from switch one to switch two. And we can see that an echo reply was sent. Switch two can also ping switch one. So we've successfully resolved two issues in this network. Be careful when troubleshooting. It's a good idea to know your OSI model and split the troubleshooting. Ping, traceroute, and CDP are useful for troubleshooting networks. It's important that you learn your show commands. Don't just type show run on a device. Learn how to use show commands to see the state of interfaces. So as an example, here we can see that the interface is up up. We'll be able to see other information on the interface, such as the load, packets sent and received and so forth. If I removed the clock rate on this interface by using the command no clock rate, what we should see on router one is that the interface goes down. It stays up for a while because of the keep alive, which is set to 10 seconds. But after a while, as you can see there, EIGRP neighbor relationship went down. And what we should see is that the physical interface goes down after a while. like that so the interface has just gone down show interface serial zero notice interface is up down so learn to use your show commands to see what's going on on the network so show controllers serial zero here we can see that a dte cable is connected but we're not receiving clocking and clocking is set this will change as you can see here, transmit and receive clocks are detected. Interface has come up, show interface serial zero. We can now see that the interface is up, up. One of the most important skills for you as a network engineer is to learn how to troubleshoot networks. I hope you found this video useful. If it's been of benefit to you, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.